What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Got something a little different for you today. If you recall a couple of weeks ago I did my first impressions and my talk about my new laptop from Nova Customs. Uh, we went over the company, what they do differently, uh, the firmware they use and why they use it and we're going to kind of uh, go a little deeper into that today. Today we're going to talk about Coreboot. Coreboot is a open source replacement for your proprietary firmware. Um, and on top of that, we're going to talk about a program called the Sharo Coreboot, which actually builds on top of Coreboot. Now, why would you want to use Coreboot, you might ask? Well, if you're ever looking for that little extra boost of performance, um, you might think about messing with your firmware a little bit. Now, I say that with caveat, because if you've never messed with your firmware before or you're not comfortable doing it, I highly recommend you don't, because you could definitely cause some serious damage to your system. But if you've done it before or you're comfortable actually following along directions and doing things step by step and actually understanding what you're doing when it comes to your computer, it is something that is very doable and it is something that you could do to actually give yourself that little boost that you've been looking for. We're going to actually do it today. I'm going to show you the steps I took to get it put on my V56 series here. Uh, we're going to be using an Arduino. I'm going to show you how I flashed the EC controller. And we are going to actually use the flashing tool here, and I'm going to show you how I externally flashed to Sharo Coreboot onto my system. So, sit back, get a drink, we're going to talk about Coreboot, we're going to talk about Desharo, we're going to do some internal flashing and some hardware stuff. It's going to be a great video, so uh, get ready and we're going to jump right into it. Alright everybody, so here we are on the laptop. Let's go ahead and launch a browser and we are going to go to coreboot.org and we are going to click on the end users tab. I'm just going to kind of paraphrase all this stuff, give you a little idea of what coreboot is. Um, basically, if you imagine your bio system, coreboot is this but stripped down to only the essentials and optimized for speed. It's a lightweight firmware, it's designed to get your hardware up and running super fast and then hand over control to your bootloader and that's basically it. Um, why should you care? Well, we're going to talk about some of the pros. First up is speed. Core Boot can dramatically reduce your boot times, which means less waiting and more getting things done. And who doesn't like to get things done, right? Secondly, Core Boot has a minimal code base. What does that mean? Well, that means fewer vulnerabilities. It's like having a smaller house, fewer windows for burglars to break into. Obviously, then there's the open source factor. Core Boot is obviously transparent and customizable. You can see everything it does. You can tweak it to your heart's content. And it's kind of like the difference between buying a pre-built car and building your own custom car. So flexibility is another big plus. Core Boot supports a range of payloads like CBIOS, Scrub, and Linux Boot. It gives you options on how your system starts up. But let's keep it real here. There are some downsides too. Compatibility can be a huge headache since Coreboot doesn't support every piece of hardware out there, especially newer or proprietary systems. And complexity, like I mentioned in the intro, if you aren't comfortable getting into your firmware or you're worried about ruining your system, maybe messing with your firmware and trying to install Coreboot isn't for you. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. You're going to need some serious technical chops. So lastly, the support. Unlike the traditional BIOS and UEFI, you're not going to have as much vendor support. It's kind of like being in a small exclusive club. Great if you love the community, but not so much if you need help at 2 o'clock in the morning. So. What's the difference now between Coreboot and Desharo? Well, we're going to switch gears a little bit here. Desharo is built on top of Coreboot, so it's basically Coreboot and then some. It aims to make it even better. Think about it as, I don't know, Coreboot on steroids. Uh, what does Desharo bring to the table then? Well, first it brings enhanced security. It adds features like verified boot and measured boot, making your system lock down tight. Then there's user-friendly setup. The Shero simplifies the configuration process, which is a huge win if you're not a firmware wizard. If we come up here and we click on this, we can come over to the docs, and we can see all this. We've got new, we've got start here. Um, it's going to walk you through all this stuff. We've got supported hardware, shows you all the different hardware versions of supports, and we have guides here for updating, flashing firmware, signing for vboot, all this good stuff. We've got performance. Desharo comes with optimized settings out of the box so you can get great performance without tweaking. Now the pros are pretty sweet. Better security, ease of use, improved performance, but as always we do have some cons. Cons could be a big factor. Some features might be behind a paywall or require a subscription and being open source fanatics we don't really like that all that much. Um, hardware requirements might limit you if you've got unique gear because like I said we've got supported hardware right here it's not a super long list. 
Um, lastly, the community is even smaller than Core Boots. Um, we said Core Boot community is a con because it's not the biggest. Well, Desheros is even smaller than Core Boots. But the fact that it is got a lot easier install and it's got the security built on top of the Core Boot Foundation, it is definitely a great uh, choice if you want to switch your firmware, if you want to get something that's giving you a little more performance off of the boot and it's going to get your system up and going, one that has a lot less vulnerabilities than the proprietary UEFI and BIOS that we're seeing in a lot of these machines, a lot smaller code base so we're not looking for all these different places where somebody can get in. It's definitely a good way to go if you want to improve speed and security on your system. Okay, so now we know a little bit about Coreboot, we know a little bit about Desharo. Let me show you the steps that I took to flash the firmware onto my new laptop. You're going to need the external flashing tool, you're going to need an Arduino, both of which are available through um, Nova Customs website, and you're going to need to know on your system where, or excuse me, on your hardware where your BIOS chip is. Now on the V56 that I have, it's right here. Uh, this little white dot up in the corner is of importance because you need to match up that dot with the little circle that is on the plug in this as well. You can see it in that lower left hand corner. So that way you get that connector hooked up in the right direction. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the USB end of this and you're going to plug it into your other laptop or desktop that has your firmware um, that you've downloaded and you're gonna plug that in there and then you're gonna take this end right here with the little circle, make sure you make note of that, and these pins, all these pins are spring loaded. You're gonna take and you're gonna line up that circle with the white dot on your BIOS chip. And I actually had to use a little magnifying glass because I could not see anything for the life of me. Um, but basically you're gonna get that, make sure all of your pins line up on one of the arms coming off the BIOS chip, and you're gonna press down until all the spring loaded pins have collapsed. Now, Nova Custom recommends putting something heavy, putting a clamp, a clamp on this and then resting something heavy on the clamp to hold it down. Um, I found that didn't work. The spring-loaded pins were just too strong. It popped off every time. So I st sat there and held it. Now, it was kind of a headache because the flashing process does take about 10 to 15 minutes. So having to hold that down completely still with pressure on it to keep those pins collapsed, it took me about four or five tries before it actually took because I kept losing connection. But basically that's how you hook it up. Once you have it hooked up, there's actually a few commands you got to run and a few things you got to do, but we will go through those right now. If we come over here to the website, we're going to go to Nova Custom and we're going to actually, if we come to be back to the home page, you can scroll down to the bottom here and to find this, you're going to find the how to verify the integrity of your firmware. You're going to click on that. You won't need to do that because you've, if, I mean, you can if you want to, but it's not necessary. Um, you can then come down to the bottom here that says show instructions to flash externally. So once you do that, again, it's going to show right here. You need the CHA341A, which is the little um, external flasher I showed you. Um, in case your laptop has a Wesson 8x6 firmware chip, um, you're going to need a different uh, clip, but you'll know that based on... Uh, um, being able to look that up um, and then like I said right here there's something heavy to put on the clamp to make sure the probe stays on the chip uh, that's not something that worked for me um, but then you're going to need another computer with Linux installed um, and has internet so you can actually run the steps below steps below are described uh, for using Ubuntu so basically instead of doing this with a void I basically built a Ubuntu VM and did everything through Ubuntu so you're going to do an update on it and you're basically going to remove any any uh, instances of flash ROM that you've already got on it. You're going to install some dependencies right here. Um, then you're going to clone the flash ROM repository. You're going to CD into it. You're going to run a make and then a sudo make install. That'll get you up and going. Now, this is the command they say to run. I had to run a slightly different command. Um, but it's basically you run sudo flash rom this is the type of flash you're using since it's an external flash and not an internal flash um, and then you're going to run a few flags on it and show the path to your rom um, basically the command i had to run was a little bit different um, i think the one i ran was let's see if i can find it through here i was just typing it a few minutes ago i don't think so um, it was sudo flash rom Oh geez, um, 
sorry. Uh, flash ROM, still had the dash P, uh, and then CH341A underscore SPI. But then I had to run a dash dash layout is layout.txt because I had to have a layout.txt file. I don't know if that's necessary now that they have a stable ROM either. But um, I had to run that and then uh, basically point to a, a few other flags um, and then put the path to the ROM. So this is the steps I had to take again. This isn't going to be the same way you're going to have to do it. But um, once I did that, like I said, I held it there and it took about 10 to 15 minutes for that to actually flash. Um, and what was once that was done, I went ahead and did the EC, uh, the embedded controller uh, BIOS, installed that. So basically, what you do there is you pop the keyboard out of the laptop, and then you hook the Arduino up to the ribbon cable that the keyboard was connected. You know, unplug the ribbon connector for the keyboard and plug in the ribbon connector that the Arduino is on, and you run a few commands for that. And that one is very difficult because you have to connect a USB cable between your new laptop that you're flashing and your old sys your old computer. And you want it to be plugged in completely in the old computer, but only just barely into your new computer so it's grounded and not communicating, and that was just a headache. So that was just a big process. I'm not even going to try to do that again to try to show you guys. Um, but um, if we come over here to Desharo, I believe it's under recovery, um, you can see the actual steps for that right here. So basically you're going to come into Desharo, go into supported hardware, um, you can go into overview here and this is under Nova custom laptops. You'll have to find your own if you're not using a Nova custom, but, um, I found one into overview, um, V56 it gives you all the information, um, uh, for what's going on with the, uh, firmware. And then down here you have your EC ROM and your firmware ROM. So you can just download them right here. You don't have to worry about building them or anything. Um, once you do that, uh, like I said, you run the flash process with the external flasher with the EC uh, flashing on the Arduino. Uh, if you go to recovery here, click on EC, V56 is what I was using. It gives you all the commands to set up your Arduino board. Um, everything you need to do right here, cloning the repository, installing the dependencies walks you through. Uh, one thing I will say for both of these, you want to make sure your BIOS battery and your main battery are disconnected. Otherwise you will have issues, um, big issues. So you're going to do all that. You can see right here, it's got a picture of a keyboard on the back. So you remove that screw and then you push your screwdriver in through the hole that the screw was there and it'll pop that keyboard out. Super easy to replace those, by the way. Unplug that um, uh, ribbon cable for the keyboard plug the Arduino board in, so you make sure this is all set up correctly, uh, plug your Arduino board in, and then you got to, uh, so, so this extra cable is for grounding, it's required because there's no ground signal on the keyboard connector. If you are not using power blocker, please ensure the power pin on the cable is taped over to prevent the embedded controller chip from getting powered. So you don't want full connection. You just want that ground. So then you're gonna build the flashing utility and you're gonna run the sudo EC flash target release examples ISP path to the EC. So you're gonna run all that and it's gonna go ahead and flash and when you're done, you will get a little message like this. Um, and then down here, you can see we've got the uh, flashing for the BIOS. So again, this is the little external flasher tool. Um, it's got all these different settings you can check on it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this is telling you to make sure your batteries are disconnected, find your BIOS chip, all that good stuff. This gives you all the directions I just kind of walked you through. Um, you can see V56, 14th gen. Uh, let's see if that, there it is right there. That's fine. <clears throat> then you're going to push it down on there. And you're going to run this to flash from right here. See, this is, the, this is the one I had run, but I had to use the layout.txt. I don't think this requires the layout.txt anymore. But really simple to find. You can come into Desharo's website and find all the directions you need to actually flash it. Um, but I was doing it a little bit before this was all set, so I had to run a few different flashing uh, 
flashing uh, procedures on it. Um, it was interesting to learn. I hope I don't have to do it again. I would prefer not to, but <laughs> um, that's just the that's the way it goes. So, yeah, hopefully you found this interesting. I know it's kind of rambling and didn't make a whole lot of sense and isn't very well put together, but uh, I'm really getting kind of bad at these. So um, I like to just sit down and hammer away on my computer and you gotta let you guys watch and see what I'm doing. But hopefully that gives you kind of an idea of what it takes to externally flash the uh, firmware and the BIOS onto your system. Um, and again, you can internally flash as well. There's ways to do that. So if you go back to Nova Customs website um, and we go back up here, you can see right here, show instructions to flash internally. So first of all, copy the core boot file to a USB drive. And then you go through this, um, all these steps here and you actually can do it without having to use the external flashing tool. So these are just a couple options, a couple of ways you can do things. Uh, a little bit about Core Boot, uh, Dasharo. Um, they're really cool. I, I really like them so far. We'll see how they work as of going forward here since I'm going to be making this my, my main machine. Um, but I really enjoy them. Uh, this has been a new experience for me doing this external flashing and everything. I really appreciate uh, uh, Nova Custom being so uh, helpful um, and patient with me as I'm doing this. Uh, but uh, it's a great company. I'm really enjoying uh, working with their with their hardware and their system. And uh, hopefully I get to work with them a little more. So um, that's what we got for today. Hopefully you found it interesting and informational. If not, hopefully I didn't bore you to death. Um, if I did, I, you probably just clicked away to begin with. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day, great rest of your evening. Stay safe and God bless.